Hi, good afternoon and welcome to this week's vlog. Um, I'm going to spend some time today looking at failure, one of the worst words that uh, people people discuss. But um, if you've spent a lot of time listening to Stephen Bartlett or the High Performance Podcast, there are a lot of conversations going on about failure and that you must allow failure in order for an organisation to be able to succeed. But what does that actually mean? I've just finished a book called Black Box Thinking by Matthew Syed. Um, very big thanks to a friend of mine, Rob Titcom, for the recommendation on the book. So I'd like to spend a bit of time in this vlog looking at the following. What is black box thinking? And why and how does it relate to failure? Why is failure so important? Can the concept of failing fast apply to all organisations? And what can your organisation do? The concept of black box thinking was coined by Matthew Syed in the in the in the in, in the book um, to describe the process of failing as a means of learning and improving. It's based on the idea that when something goes wrong, we should investigate the causes and learn from them, trying to rather than trying to cover them up and ignore them. It's called black box thinking because it's related to the black boxes in aircraft. The aviation industry has a really rugged procedure for following up and learning um, in, uh, after, after an incident occurs. Um, it's a really open process and all areas are looked at and changes are made very often all the way through the process, even down to when people board aircrafts, um, how the uh, flight crew, what the flight crew are doing for the two days before and all sorts of stuff like that. So there's an awful lot of work goes into it and it's done in a completely no-blame culture. So the importance of it comes from the fact that um, if I look at something like Agile, um, an Agile development methodology, they thrive on small and rapid changes being made and the removal of items that cause an issue. Traditionally, apply, it's applied to consumer software, but it has become increasingly relevant in the world of business and with many organisations trying to adopt it, some by force because they believe it will give them flexibility and speed to market. One of the critical things in Agile is the acceptance of failure as part of the review cycle and almost a, um, a reviewing and endorsing it as part of the process. It allows you to quickly assess what's good and bad and ignore the blame that goes on around it and move on to either fixing or re removing the problem or finding another problem to solve. The key is to ensure that you accept failure and learn from it. While Agile is, Agile is a good point of discussion, it's not really what I want to focus on. It's the failure and learning that comes from it. Regardless of whether you adopt Agile, the, the, that kind of culture of accepting failure is something to make sense. So, why do we hear that organized, uh, organizations um, lack the ability to accept failure? And why is this often treated as the enemy as part of kind of uh, our organizational life? I guess there are considerations that you should put around this. Um, and, you know, looking at it, the, the concept of can, uh, you know, can failing fast apply to all organizations? One of the classic examples here is that organisations are averse to risk and it very often applied to large organisations, particularly ones like the medicine industry, but where you don't really have the luxury of failing uh, or, or trying something 10 times and failing nine in order to find the one that's successful. Um, but there is more to failing fast than this. You may have an issue, but it's the learnings from it that are key. So regardless of where you start in the process, you should always be learning as you step through the process. And whether the process is good or bad, always take some lessons away from it. The second reason I'd look at why organisations don't necessarily aren't capable of adop adopting the fail fast methodology is resistance to change. Um, you tend to see this in much bigger organisations and the statements you'll hear in this are we all we've always done it like this why do we need a review when we when we feel you know when we feel like we've done everything we can we just dust ourselves off and get on with it again we don't we don't learn and quite often in those organizations you find the repetition of the the words um 
there's no point in we don't need to do this again because um, this is how we've always done it and you know it's kind of one of the most common statements that the the the, the closest um, view to insanity is um trying something twice and expecting a different result at the same time um i use the example of blockbuster in this anyone who can remember them anyone who's kind of old enough to remember them um you used to go and get your videos and kind of take them away that organization no longer exists interestingly blockbuster were offered the opportunity to buy netflix um, for a relatively cheap price, which could have transformed the way they uh, do their business. But they were adamant that the business was going to remain the same, so chose to stick with it. And I think history speaks for itself. The last one on this is agility and flexibility. Um, it's not the last reason for, for, for failing fast, but it is one that is, is, is absolutely critical to a business. And I think as organisations grow, that ability to be agile and flexible, um, often in order to make changes quickly, it will cost half a million pounds and so on. But the key here is that you need to kind of come up with something that allows you to be agile and flexible, even in those larger organisations. So given this and the concept that failing fast is the right thing for your organisation, what can organisations do to allow them to um, carry on and allow them to adopt a methodology where they fail fast? The first is create a culture that encourages experimentation and learning from mistakes. This can be done on a very small scale to reduce the cost burden as it's often more about the attitude of the people than anything else. The review cycle in this is absolutely critical. And to this end, that review process is one that everyone should focus on. It should be open, endorsing, shared with everyone, and everyone should look at it with a positive view that the things you're gonna implement out the back end of it are the right things for the organization. Things like post-mortems and retrospectives are recommended here. And the most important thing of all in this, as I've kind of said all the way through here, is to encourage the sharing of failure. It is not a bad thing to fail something. It is not a bad thing to not win a piece of business. You need, from it, you will learn. You will learn everything about what's going on. You will learn, and through that review process, you will be able to adapt yourselves and make yourselves better. Um, uh, if you listen to the story of the Hubble Space Telescope, a lot of theories came around after the Hubble Space Telescope was launched 20 odd years ago. Now, with the latest um, uh, telescope that's gone up, it can see even further back in time. And it's starting to prove what the Hubble te te Space Telescope told us wrong. We would never have been in a position to launch the satellite if we hadn't kind of come up with the theories that the Hubble Space Telescope allowed us to do. So everything that did was a step forward, even though what we're now learning proves, the, proves that the, the learnings from the K Space Telescope were wrong. So in conclusion on this, um, failure is critical to growth. You can only learn from what you did wrong, but it's difficult, particularly as organisations grow, to maintain that agile mindset. But it's absolutely critical to keep teams small and be open and encourage them to be brave. If your organisation's already past this, the, it's not all over. I talk about leading from behind a lot in the, the management style that I adopt. Create your team with a structure of sharing of knowledge and the world will change in front of you. Thanks very much for listening today. If you like what you hear, click the subscribe button. I'll make sure all the resources and books that were kind of covered in this are referenced in the um, notes. But thank you very much uh, and have a good day.